Hello, welcome back to my uh, another one of my ramblings about movie videos. Um, I will focus this video on Ridley Scott, one of my favorite directors, as with many people in this business, he certainly has his hits and misses. But um, let's go back to the start of me discovering Ridley Scott. Right. Uh, Blade Runner, the movie, came out in the summer of 1982. Um, I think two weeks or so after The Wrath of Khan came out, but I did not uh, get to see it in the theater. I can't remember uh, the reason why I didn't go see it. Uh, perhaps uh, you know it was. Uh, I perhaps I was not aware of it, so I didn't know about that movie until I saw it later uh, on cable TV. So um, around 1984 or so, I was told about a movie, Aliens. I'm not a big fan of horror movie in general. Uh, I don't find them all that interesting. Uh, often, uh, I am super annoyed when I watch a horror movies because, you know, most horror movies that I saw have a lot of plot holes and often most characters in these movies are just stupid. You know, you almost root for them to get killed off because they're so dumb or annoying. Anyhow, so um, around like 1984 or so, um, the family that I was living with, uh, you know, I was living with an American family at this point in time, um, which I will. I might go into another video another time, but I live with an American family. And around 1984, my, uh, I guess we can call him Guardian Father, uh, talk about a movie that he saw back in 79, a few, year, a few years earlier that horrified him, scared him. And he mentioned it was alien. I think Alien, the original movie, came out in 1979, and um, he felt that you know I was old enough at this point to see it, and I might enjoy it just because he knows that I didn't like horror movie in general, but I like science science fiction. So he uh, rented a, a, a tape VHS of Alien, the movie, and I watch it. And I was blown away. To this day, it's one of my favorite all-time horror movie. You know, I, I, I categorize that as horror more so than science fiction because to me, Alien was a great horror movie that just happened to took place in space in the future. So in that sense the surrounding was kind of sci-fi but the heart of the movie is about you know horror. Um, and I must say it's the very first horror movie that I sat down and watched and was completely mesmerized from the first second to the last second because it was just so awesome you know I mean the greatest thing about Alien the original movie was you didn't see the creature until the end so for the first half of the movie you see a little bit of it when the chest bursting scene was just crazy okay the first time anyone see the chest bursting scene you probably jump out screaming, um, and 
and then you know for the next 30 minutes one by one as a crew member get picked off you don't see a lot you know you see a little slime saliva some teeth showing the shadow glimpse of the horror but it was so well done in that you know I, I can't say enough about how much I enjoyed that movie even today I watched I have rewatched that movie so many times and I never get bored of it it's one of those movies where I must have seen hundreds of times because I enjoyed it I recommend that movie to so many people that does not know about Ridley Scott uh, it was so well done it was a masterpiece you know um, and then of course at the, the end when the alien finally show up okay and reveal its full glory it was just amazing I mean I have to say that the, the, the build up was just perfect so by the time that you see it you're just like oh my god you're not even scared anymore of the alien but you're just like wow what a monster um, so that's my first exposure to Ridley Scott and shortly after that because I was so happy to see um, that movie um, he recommended my guardian father uh, recommended I should see another movie that Ridley Scott made called Blade Runner so he rented another VHS for me to watch and I liked it I had to say that you know it, it didn't um, wow me as much as it as Alien did but for sure I enjoyed the movie and once again I really liked the way Ridley Scott approached Blade Runner uh, to me, once again, you know, looking at a movie that took place in the future, in that it's sci-fi, but really it's a, almost like a detective thriller. You know, I've, it's almost fall into that category instead of like saying it's a, my favorite sci-fi movie. It's more of a thriller, detective kind of movie and um, genre. And I enjoyed it. I thought, you know, I... <laughs> Who doesn't like Rucker Howard? You know, I mean, he was awesome, Harrison Ford. But the whole tone of the movie was just gorgeous. Is Ridley Scott is always great at you know the cinematography uh, angle, and it was beautiful. The whole set was beautiful. The that whole dirty, grimy future that he built for that movie was just awesome. Uh, I enjoy the movie very much and I think with Alien and Blade Runner uh, it cemented me as far as being a Ridley Scott fan uh, before I go on with Ridley Scott I want to take a few minutes to go segue into how much I like Blade Runner uh, I enjoy Blade Runner enough that uh, when uh, Dark Horse the company became in existence and start to do comic books that are movie based like Predator, Aliens, Alien vs Predator and the whole slew of movie that they transported to comic books when they launched that company and all in the, in the various lines of um, comic books I was super excited um, so uh, at the time, you know, I still had a little hope of being a comic book artist. I drew and drew and drew. So when I saw Dark Horse look, become popular right away, the very first thing that I had in my mind for a long time was doing a comic book. Blade Runner and uh, this was segue well into uh, you know Aliens 2 in that by this time Aliens 2 came out and James Cameron did a fantastic job and he completely made the sequel very different from the original Alien movie the original Alien movie was a horror 
movie. And then Jim Cameron came in and took Alien into the move it toward the action genre. And you have a fantastic non-stop great action uh, with Aliens. And I love that movie too. So when I sat down and write my script for Blade Runner, I decided to kind of copycat what uh, James Cameron did. So, you know, here we have um, the original Blade Runner, more of a, a thriller detective movie. I want to take the sequel into more of a full-blown action movie, <laughs> okay? So, for my part, I basically wrote a short script. It's, you know, a couple pages. It was like two and a half pages as far as how I outline what I was doing, you know, instead of... So basically what I did was I take the sequels shortly after the end of the movie where the, 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 the Harrison character and the girl disappear. Well, it turns out that the government, in my script, reversed their policy on replicant. Um, you know, uh, there's a need to revive the program because uh, we are at war. So, <laughs> in order to, you know, fight, uh, the, the government at the time decided that instead of risking human life, it's better off to revamp, rebirth the replicant program so that they can create soldier. Unfortunately, as you know, in the original movie, the creator of the, the replicant was killed. So right now, as we know, the, the only survival replicant is running with uh, Harrison's character. So basically the movie is about the, the big chase, non-stop action between the cops, the detective, the bounty hunter, to, to trying to get the remaining replicant so that they can capture it and study it and reproduce. But that's what yes, that's my stupid crazy script for Blade Runner 2. <laughs> so I, I wrote, you know, like I said, I outlined the story and where I wanted to go with the series on like two or two and a half pages. And then I did draw uh, three pages and I ink three pages of that beginning of uh, the storyline and I you know neatly mail it to uh, Dark Horse and that was it never it, I'd never heard a peep from them again <laughs> so that's my uh, one of my few foray into the industry or trying to break in I, I mail samples to Marvel too but that's another bad story uh, anyhow, back to Ridley Scott. So, you know, as far as his movies is concerned, you know, I mean, I thought uh, Gladiator was okay. Uh, you, know, I, you know, I think more people enjoy Gladiator than I did. I liked it enough, but I would put that more in the range of like two and a half star out of four. It was something that I watched once, and I think the second time I watched it, I couldn't finish it. I, I had enough. Um, but you know, over the years, you know, it seemed like he has always been able to put out this movie that I enjoy. But um, I want to, to talk more about the recent movie that he did, Prometheus, which is the prequel to Alien, and give you my thoughts about. Uh, what I think of Prometheus. Um, the original Alien movie, what made it great, or any other movie, okay, and I mentioned this in other video, is that for me to enjoy the movie, I really have to like some of the characters. The more the better. You know, they don't have to be nice people or wonderful people in the movie, but somehow I must like the character 
that they built in the movie. The original cast of Alien was great, you know. I, I, I liked every member of the ship and I felt bad for each one of them when they were killed. Now, when you get to Prometheus, my biggest problem, okay, the movie had a ton of plot holes, and for those that already seen the movie, we don't need to rehash the plot holes. But my biggest problem with Prometheus, from the very get-go, halfway through the movie, is I felt he and the writer failed miserably at the character development. Uh, outside of the lead female character, she was fine. From her boyfriend all the way through the rest of the crew, I cannot stand any of them. They were not believable. You know, you gotta understand, here is a crew, mostly scientists. Sure, when they sign up for this mission and get paid a lot of money, they weren't sure what their job is going to be. But after the first five, ten minutes when they found out that this mission is to go find the creator, to find our creator, the attitude was so, so lexy daisy that it was a big turn off for me. Like, seemed like nobody gave a damn about the mission. You know, they came more about, hey, I just want to, I'm just going to be here to get paid a lot of money and I don't give a crap about finding the creator or anything else. Sure, maybe that, that was the intended, so I'm not blaming the actor, okay? I, I, I have a problem with the writers and Ridley Scott creating this world where you have a bunch of people on a mission to find the creator and yet almost all of them don't give a crap. To me, you know, that's just silly. It's, it's not even believable. Uh, so that's the, that's the part that I could not overcome halfway through the movie. And as the movie progressed, um, I find myself care less about it. most of them. They can just die off. I don't care because they're just stupid to me. You know, uh, And that's, I think, is the biggest problem with me as far as Prometheus. Uh, I wish when I wish the movie have created a, a better cast characters where you know these people have a little bit more passion about the mission and um, you know then as the movie progressed then me as a viewer would care more about them and care more about what happening to them you know so. Whenever I have a bad movie, often it's because I don't care for the character. I couldn't care less what happened to them. I couldn't care less what they achieve in the movie because I find them boring. And I think that's my main problem with Prometheus is we have, like I said, 90% outside of the main character and Michael Fassbender, the robot, those, no doubt, the lead female character and Michael Fassbender was fantastic. I have no complaint, and I think they did a wonderful job. But to me, they put so much effort in those two characters that they neglect the other eight or nine characters in the movie, which make those characters' death and survival meaningless. They was a waste of time and screen time. They were not, you know, they, they were they were just screen filled up time. As far as I am concerned, so that's my complaint with Ridley Scott and uh, and uh, from what I heard uh, they have green light the sequel to Prometheus I have no idea where they are going for this movie I would likely go see it just because I'm a big um, Ridley Scott fan and um, you know for sure I am also excited that they are trying to uh, do the Blade Runner sequel with Ridley Scott also at the helm. So there's a lot of uh, you know fun things that can happen with Ridley Scott. I just hope that he's going to be around. He's in his 70s, so he's not that young. So hopefully, you know, in the next two to four years, he will have the time and energy and resources to finish 
these two sequels that he's doing on top of the few other um, projects that he has going on. Like I said, Ridley had done a lot of great movies from, you know, I, I can name so many, but, you know, for sure, some of my favorite is uh, Black Hawk Down. Fantastic movie. That's a great movie. Uh, you know, you can throw in um, Blade Runner, Aliens, you know, there's, there's, there's so many. But no doubt, you know, I, I think he's uh, one of those few um, directors that I'm always excited to see his name attached to any project. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this rambling about Ridley Scott. Thanks for watching. Bye.